Hello and welcome to the Schedule channel and today we're going to be seeing if the RTX 3060 Ti and Ryzen 3600 is a good CPU and GPU combination. Now I already did a video like this for the RTX 3060 and RTX 3070 so definitely check those out. I'll have those both linked in the description but yet again I asked you guys on Twitter yo what <laughs> what CPU you want to see paired up with the 3060 Ti and yet again the 3600 won. So this is probably gonna be the last time I use a Ryzen CPU for this sort of video. Anyways, to see if this is a good combination or not, I'll be comparing the benchmarking results between these two against my Ryzen 5800X and the same graphics card since that eight core 16 threaded processor should fully utilize this RTX 3060 Ti at 1440p gaming. So we'll see how much of a gap there is between that processor and this mid-range 3600 to see if there's any possible bottlenecking or CPU cap. So before we get into this video, I want to give a quick word to our sponsor, Corsair. If you're looking for the end all be all of ATX cases, one that you can keep from now until the end of time while looking stylish and functional, then consider one of the Corsair 5000D series cases. With top-notch cable management, plentiful cooling, excellent build quality, and all-around compatibility with nearly all PC parts, it's a good investment if you plan to keep a PC case for a long time, so check it out at the top of the description below. But first, let's talk about the absolute behemoth of a card we have on here, the colorful RTX 3060 Ti Vulcan Edition graphics card. This one, of course, has the huge triple fan, triple slot cooler design, which does actually help its temperatures. While I was gaming on it at stock speeds, it never exceeded 59 degrees Celsius and overclocked when you press this button right here, which I'll talk about later, it went never went past 63 degrees Celsius. So yes, this really huge cooler does work. And to be fair, I kind of like it. Also, this has three eight pin power connectors because it We'll kind of need that if you wanted to do some serious overclocking on this graphics card. And as well as about that boost clock speed actually on the topic of overclocking, when you press this button right here, it seems like a gimmick, but it actually manually overclocks the card to a boost clock speed of 1,815 megahertz. So for a 3060 Ti, having that already done for you, it's actually not too much of a gimmick if you really want more frames per seconds, which according to my test, did help slightly in certain games. So nice thing to have in this sort of graphics card. But I guess on the topic of gimmicks, there's also a LCD screen, <laughs> which you can play around with and have certain things appear on screen, like your graphics card temperature, or even just like a logo that is also available on here, which when you're paying for this sort of graphics card, you're probably gonna want customization like that. And with all that, that is the colorful RTX 3060 Ti Vulcan Edition card. So that is the 3060 Ti we are using for this video. It is probably one of the most juiced up you can find. So if it's gonna push the Ryzen 3600 to any sort of CPU cap, this should be the one to do it. But we'll see how that is with looking at the benchmarks. So starting with Call of Duty Modern Warfare, maxed out graphical settings at 1440p with SMAA at 2X for anti-aliasing. There is a bit of a difference between the averages between the 3600 and 5800X at 1440p. But I mean, the 5800X is on a new or a newer architecture, so it will be a decent amount faster. At Forza Horizon 4 at ultra settings, there's about a six frame per second difference between the two processors, so nothing too drastic there, but the 1% low on the 5800X is a lot higher. Now moving on to Fortnite, there is another fairly big difference between the two chips at 1440p. The 5800X is getting about 180 frames per second average, while the 3600 is about 150. Though keep in mind, this is using the Fortnite benchmark map, which just throws everything the game has at you while you're moving through this little maze. So it's quite taxing and not exactly representative of what you're gonna see in game but it's just there to note the differences between the two CPUs with the 3060 Ti. Now onto Apex Legends with max graphical settings. The average frame rate was actually not too different between the two chips, thankfully, at 1440p, so that is a good game. And at Cyberpunk 2077 at the Ray Tracing Ultra preset, 
there's a one frame per second difference between the two processors. And out of the whole benchmark, actually, of all the games that I tested, this was the only one that came slightly close to maybe possibly bottlenecking the graphics card because as you can see, the CPU usage is getting quite high and the GPU usage is all the way at 100%. So that is the only scenario where I see any possible CPU bottlenecking maybe happening, but nothing too much. As you can see, there's a one for frame per second difference and Cyberpunk 2077 is quite a taxing game. Then finishing out, we have Rainbow Six Siege at ultra settings with a one frame per second difference between the two processors. On Grand Theft Auto V, there is a little bit of a difference. We have 92 frames on the 5800X and 84 on the 3600. And then finishing out at Valheim at max graphical settings, you guessed it from the last video, this game's still an alpha, I think. And just like the RTX 3060 video where I compared the 3600 and the 5800X, the results were also inverse this time. The 3600 somehow did better than the 5800X, which doesn't make sense, just like the last one, and I reran the test two times, and that was the case. So Valheim, again, just being a really weird outlier, which is why I keep it for last. So with those results in mind, would I think the Ryzen 3600 and 3060 Ti are a good CPU and GPU combination? It's good. In my 3070 and 3600 video, I say that that was an all right combination for about nine out of 10 games you'd be playing. And the same more or less applies for this. I don't think you're necessarily going to be bottlenecking the 3060 Ti heavily. Either way though, it's still gonna get you tons of frames per seconds. At 1440p, you will be pleased. At 1080p, not even a problem because you're gaming at 1080p on what would be a $400 graphics card, but this is obviously not 400. And as far as the actual graphics card itself, if you want the most juiced up 3060 Ti, that's gonna last you a long time if you ignore that eight gigabyte VRAM buffer, I look at the colorful one. It's got the most pizzazz, a lot of great cooling, and even a manual overclocking button, which will do all the overclocking already for you, but you just gotta press on the back of your PC case for a little more frames per seconds. And after all, it looks a lot more expensive than what it really is if we we're talking about MSRP. But either way, this is a pretty well-engineered card from Colorful. It's gonna stay cool and quiet no matter what you throw at it. Anyways, that closes out today's video. And I wanna thank you guys for watching all the way till the end. Things have been a little bit busy here since I've had to pick things up quickly after my vacation. And I'm moving on to the 6700 XT launch and an Intel CPU launch. So things are a bit hectic. So for those of you who make it to the end of these videos, I do appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end because that increases viewer retention ratings and that's good to see. Anyways, I've got a Twitter, Discord, Instagram, TikTok, and a Twitch all linked in the description below. Check out the Discord specifically because we did a little revamp and it looks pretty nice now. So definitely check it out. And yet again, all that is in the description below on top of the card and of course, Sarah 5000 series case. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterable channel. Signing out.